Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Do you feel bored, cynical, demotivated, disappointed, and pessimistic about your reboots or your reboot attempts or whatever else you're doing to try and end your behavior with pornography? Do you constantly feel that need to be perfect? Do you often feel like a failure and Find yourself blaming outside circumstances for all the problems that you're experiencing. Like, oh, my schedule is, it's just too tight. I don't have time to dedicate to this. I'm too busy at work. I have too many responsibilities. I can't afford to seek help right now. Like, I always want to do that, but the kids wake up too early in the morning, so I can't do that, that morning routine thing. Are you always blaming other things? Do you have no more ambition to take action? Like, yeah, I know this is important in my life, but I just don't have that fire anymore. Like, really, I'm just so busy and so blah with just all the things happening in my life that I'm not even bothered with that. I can't even push myself further. What's happening is that if you're serious about following this system, then you're not implementing the basics of the program. It's that simple. Now, what I'm going to share with you all today on this podcast is very important. I'm sharing something that is internal. That means it's just being shared in the implementation program. I'm going to share some of the very important basics. So please pay attention to this particular episode. The basics of this program are not in place for fun, and they are not supposed to be a filler. They are not random, nice-sounding, self-improvement, mental masturbation tasks that are optional. The basics are things like recording your daily wins, using the win wall, doing your feelings exercise, gratitude, accountability, maintaining your boundaries, writing out your goals, reminding yourself of some of the principles such as slips or data, reminding yourself of progress over perfection, reminding yourself to work with your brain instead of against your brain, internalizing those principles. And when you don't follow those reboot basics, you experience loss of motivation, you start getting pessimistic about this entire thing. You're like, ah, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't work for me. Maybe JK is full of shit. Maybe this and this and that. Maybe the porn reboot system only works for guys who are motivated. Maybe this is for dudes who are this and that. You start experiencing a lot of boredom. You're just like, God, I'm just, this is not engaging enough for me. I am bored by the process of ending my behavior. You start becoming very cynical of a lot of stuff. Sometimes I get emails from guys who have gotten cynical. Two months ago, they're emailing all happy and excited and motivated. Next thing you know, they had the biggest cynics. You start trying to be perfect. Perfectionism. If I'm not going to do this every single day, then I might as well not do it at all. And then you constantly feel like a failure. You're like, this, there's no point. <laughs> it doesn't matter, man. No matter how well I do this, no matter how good I get at it, no matter how motivated I am, no matter how many months I stay of this, I constantly feel like a failure. But when you start following the basics, you start experiencing optimism. You start feeling like, hey, it's just very possible that I can control this behavior. You start feeling motivated. You start feeling confident about yourself and your ability to do this. And make no mistake, this is bleeding into other areas of your life. It starts showing up in your work. It starts showing up in your relationships. When you follow the basics, you get excited about the process. You get excited about what you can change in your life. You start experiencing great ambition. Not just when it comes to your reboot, but in other areas of your life. Because you realize that if I can overcome this one thing that has stuck with me into my 30s and my 40s and my 50s, my 60s, then anything is possible. Like, I never thought I could control this. But if I can control this, what else could I do? And a lot of those dreams that you put aside, that you canceled because of age, because of health, because of time because you were married, because guys in their 30s or 40s or late 20s are not supposed to do that, quote unquote, you start believing that you can do them again. You start getting a sense of achievement. You start feeling like a winner again. But it is important to note that 
when you first start implementing the basics, you won't feel anything. This isn't like porn, brother. <laughs> there is no immediate feedback like you're used to. Sometimes you might feel a sense of well-being. You might feel a little bit of excitement and motivation, but it, is, it doesn't last long when you first start. It might even feel monotonous. A voice in your head might tell you that, you know what? Dude, all these things, this accountability stuff, done it before, the filter, the buy, I get it. I've read the books. I'm into self-improvement. I've done it with a coach for my business, for my real estate, for my whatever sort of business that you run. You might start feeling that it's a waste of time. You might do it for two weeks and you still slip. You often get guys saying like, hey man, I did all the basics and I still slip. That's because the basics do not stop slips or relapses, gentlemen. You guys go out there and you'll listen to all these individuals out there who tell you that all those things I mentioned, like feelings exercise and gratitude and accountability and put it, writing out your goals and boundaries and so on, they tell you, if you do these things, brothers, and if you stay strong, you will stay off your behavior. No, you're still going to slip and you're still going to relapse. This is just foundational stuff. This is basic, basic, basic. What are they building foundations for? Three pillars. Habits lifestyle, and self-image. Now, these are not the stages of your reboot, okay? <laughs> the stages are much more detailed than this. This is just for the guys who are like, JK, just don't, don't make this complex, please. What do I need to accomplish to get to the point where my brain is rewired and I do not have to worry? I do not have to use terms like I'm in recovery or I have been in recovery for this number of years. I want to get to the point where this is no longer an issue in my life. Of course, you need to change your habits, you need to change your lifestyle, then you need to change your self-image. Following the basics of building the right habits leads to a cascade of small wins. You start experiencing achievement, you start experiencing confidence, you start getting optimistic, you start getting more ambitious, you experience a sense of satisfaction with different areas of your life, and you start getting excited about the entire process. Your unconscious mind is compelled to make this a part of your lifestyle, since the feedback is a long-term sense of well-being. So your unconscious mind realizes that, hey, 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 wait a minute. So we've been doing this thing, and I'm starting to feel good for long periods of time. It's no longer up and down. I'm starting to go for days and weeks and feel excited and optimistic. Okay. So when you do this often enough, of course, there's a reason why accountability is thrown into the basics, because you're going to need that to stay consistent. Some of you might be thinking, now, oh, this is too simplistic. I've tried it before and I fail all the time. That's because you didn't fucking have accountability, the right type of accountability. Oh, I've heard that before. People have said that. Yeah, I know about what accountability. No, fucker. You, <laughs> you can tell that I'm frustrated with this because I do get guys who are like, but, 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 and they're not even clients. My clients don't do that. There is accountability where it's just your buddy or your friend from church or your brother or some dude who eventually you're going to hit a wall with him because you're not going to share shit. He doesn't give a shit. He's not as invested as you are. And you're like, I tried accountability. It didn't work. It's very different when you are in a group with other men who have invested financially, mentally, emotionally. They would be there if you weren't even there. They were like, I was going to work with JK anyway. I'm serious about this. When you're in the program with other men like that, the quality of accountability is different. Just so you know how seriously we take accountability in our group, if an accountability bond has been built with someone in the group and they leave the group, let's say they rewire, they get to the late stage of their reboot and they decide that they do not want to be in the group and they want to move on, we will not pull them away from the accountability partner or assign somebody else to the group. There's no fees, there's nothing. The accountability brothers are still in the group. We're not like, yeah, so. You know, we provided this environment. We brought in all these great guys. So if you're no longer here, you just, you know, you can't, you can't be part of. No, the bond is more important than anything. So when you're in that situation, you're able to make this a part of your lifestyle. Now, lifestyle is what leads to rewiring. When a lot of these things are more than just habitual, they're things that you actually just have to do. It's just, it's how you live. When guys are like, hey man, let's go out and let's hang out like super late at night. I'm not saying you can't do that. It takes some effort now. Now there's a little bit of resistance. Now you're juggling certain things. In the past you wouldn't. You're like, yeah guys, I haven't been out in a while. Let's do this. Let's go party. Let's go have drink. 
Now your lifestyle's a little bit different. You're like, you know what? I kind of like the confidence and the optimism and the ambition and the excitement and the sense of achievement. I don't know if I want to do anything to ruin it. It's kind of like if you start going to bed earlier and waking up early and you're just crushing it and accomplishing a lot of things. If somebody tells you, hey man, let's just stay up late at night, immediately you're like, is this stuff worth it? I remember I got to that point when, I don't know when movies started becoming two hours long, but now before I see a movie, I'll look it up. Someone's like, oh, my girl's like, let's go see a movie. And I'll look it up. And even I might, I'm actually usually the one who suggests we go see a movie. If I look at it and it's like two hours, 30 minutes, the first thing I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to look for the reviews because I'm like, is this worth two hours of my time this evening? Of course, I solved that problem by taking my Mondays off and I can go see a movie in the middle of the day on a Monday, which is fine. But lifestyle is what leads to rewiring. Now you have no good reason to view pornography or to depend on masturbation to feel good. Your mind is actually going to start rebelling against anything which gives you short-term pleasure, but long-term pain. But it only works when you have built the right habits. This is what stops your relapses. How do I stop relapsing? Build the right habits first. And do it enough till it becomes a part of your lifestyle. Of course, your lifestyle also includes the people whom you spend time with. It also includes the environment that you're in. That's why it's important to be part of a community, even if it's temporarily, even if it's for a year, maybe it's for two years. It's important to be around that until this is established as a lifestyle. But you can't stop there. Again. There are some SAA groups, there are some 12-step groups that do a wonderful job. Even some churches do an amazing job of creating the lifestyle part. Unfortunately, they don't do the next step, which is about self-image. See, this constant realization that your current lifestyle makes you happier is going to naturally prompt you to find a way to make it permanent. That is, while you're using the Porn Reboot system. If you're not using the Porn Reboot system, You'll just keep living that lifestyle. But internally, you still live in fear that if you went away from this church, that if you left this group, you would slip and you would relapse. So you think that you need to live within a box in order to maintain your lifestyle. You start thinking, I got a lot of questions from brothers who are not in our program. Do I need to do these coping strategies for the rest of my life? Do I need to maintain these boundaries for the rest of my life? Do I have to have an accountability partner for the rest of my life? Why do they ask these questions? They ask these questions because of what I call the religion of recovery. It has nothing to do with religion, but all I'm saying is that it is somewhat dogmatic. There are some beliefs that I have to stay this way for the rest of my life. And those who go to AA, those who go to SAA, they go out there and they preach this. They're like, listen, man, I don't give a shit what you have to say day by day. I go to my meetings every week. That's what works for me. That's my box. If I travel anywhere, I'm going to find me a meeting. Good for you. That's wonderful. I ain't got time to be going to meetings for the rest of my life. I got shit to do in my life. And frankly speaking, I'm not looking to go back to seasons of my life and revisit any of that stuff. That, well, to be, to be frank with you guys, that wasn't my plan. Irony is, I'm sitting here in front of the mic talking about (laughs) porn reboot. But that wasn't my plan for many years. And I lived a normal, exciting life without many of the boundaries, without the accountability partners, without many of those things, once I had rewired my brain. So again, the hope is that luckily you'll be in the program (laughs) when it is time, when you hit the lifestyle part of this. Again, I want to make this clear. This is no advertisement to like, make you insinuate or suggest that you should be a part of our program for a long time. We have guys who come in and in three months, they're out. The vast majority of the guys in our program will stay there for a year. We have brothers who want to stay all the way till they are fully rewired. And they also want to hit different areas of reboot capital. They're like, this is fantastic, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm still struggling financially. It doesn't change the fact that my relationship is still falling apart. I'm concerned that even after I rewire my brain and I get into a relationship, I might deal with porn-induced erectile dysfunction. I might sabotage this relationship. I realize I have other behavioral issues that haven't been addressed. And I'm right here in this amazing community of supportive people 
We have great coaches here. Now, at this point in the year, you don't even need to go get a therapist because we now have all that stuff within the Porn Reboot system. We have something equivalent to it. Let me be a little bit more specific. So you'll be in the program and you'll realize that you need to change your self-image for freedom from pornography to be permanent. And this is how rewiring your brain becomes permanent. See, life is still going to throw shit at you after your reboot. And if you only have the lifestyle, like SAA, 12 Steps, some sort of church program or men's group or men who rely on therapy, or maybe you're even working in one of these coaches that are popping up all over the place who say they'll help with your porn addiction and they're very effective at getting you to the lifestyle part. But, you know, some of these incidents may lead to a relapse, the things that life throws at you, even years down the line. We've seen it so many times. Men who come to me and they just name everybody they've worked with. I was like, bro, but you saw me all those years ago. Why didn't you work with me? Oh, blah, 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 blah. I work with this person, work with the best therapist. This year. You know this guy? He wrote this book, Garbo Mate, and this, this, this. I studied all these methodologies. I'm like, but you're still here. You're still relapsed. Lifestyle, that was the thing. They didn't do anything wrong. It's just every nobody told them about the self-image part. You can address the root cause of an issue with a therapist, and your self-image does not budge. With the right self-image, Neither sex, pornography, or masturbation even crosses your mind. You step into healthy coping mechanisms as easily as you switch gears in your car. It's second nature. That's when you start unlocking your abilities to accomplish the extraordinary. For those of you who are familiar with NoFap, or some of these coaches out there, or I don't know who else, Dickie and semen retention dude, I know a lot of guys who listen to this podcast are not familiar with this, but just look it up. All these guys telling you about superpowers that you can gain, amazing things that will happen when you quit pornography, you know, like women will be more attracted to you when you retain your semen and not have sex and stay away from women. You're going to be able to make more money and attract money to you and blah, 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 blah. Life does not care that you controlled your sexual behavior. And the truth is you are the only one. You are the expert at yourself. It is only via experience that you can begin to notice the things that are changing in your life uniquely for you. Now, are there some extraordinary things that can happen? Yes, but they're not going to happen at the level these guys are hyping it up at. They're not going to happen when you've just changed your habits. Sure, when you change your habits in your life, everybody is aware that there are some positive things that happen. Depending on how low you are in your life, if you were living on the street, and you change your habits, and your habits put a roof over your head. That is, that can be considered under that context to be extraordinary. Sure. But when you have changed your habits, and you have changed your lifestyle, and your life has stabilized, and you have moved on from survival, this is where you can start doing the things that you were dreaming of doing. And there is nothing wrong with staying at lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with staying in that men's group and going for meetings every week because of the fear that you experience. I'm not going to judge you for that. All I want to make clear is that when it comes to the porn reboot system, we are aiming for something beyond. We only get one shot at this. We're going all out. We're stepping beyond mere survival. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't become a part of this. There are lots of guys who hear that. They come in. And they have a very specific goal. They're like, oh, that's all wonderful, self-image, everything. I just want to get to the lifestyle part and I'm out of here. Cool. No one's going to stop you. As I said, you'll accomplish some pretty sweet things (laughs) when you change your habits and your lifestyle. But the magic happens later. Let me give you one or two examples. I remember last year we had a guy who joined the implementation program. And when he joined, he spoke to a reboot strategist and he was like, dude, I know I need this. He's like, I'm in a very, very rough spot financially. He's like, I'm not even thinking about the intensive, but he's like, I know I need to be in this community. I've been listening to JK's stuff for a long time. It's literally, he's like, I've listened to a lot of stuff. I've consumed a lot of material. This is the only thing that makes sense to me. And it always makes sense. And it's consistent. And I've just got to put myself in this and go all the way. But he's like, I don't know if I can afford to go all the way. Reboot strategist talked to him, set him up, got him into the program. He didn't know if he could go all the way because of his financial situation, which is very rough. He came in, and in a couple of months, 
this dude had started a freelance business. He had literally built up the habits and was starting to build the lifestyle. And his main focus was his social and financial reboot capital. He was still slipping here and there, but he got to the point where he built up a freelancing business where he was making $10,000 a month. This brother was like, he was young. He was like 20, 23, 24 years old. Like consistently he was making it. It wasn't like the first month. And he started saving and he started making great decisions. That's in the implementation program. In the intensive program, we have even more amazing things happening. We have guys who are already running multiple businesses. We have guys who are doing really well in their career and they want to start some sort of side hustle or business on the side or start investing. And we have seen them improve in the millions, quite literally, when it comes to their businesses. Things that they were like, I never have time to, to go all in on this. Like, I have this great idea. I started it. I'm always talking to my wife about it, but I just never go all in. Next thing you know, they're doing it on the side. They've learned how to manage their time better. They're seeing how a lot of their thoughts, their negative thought patterns are holding them back and taking up a lot of space in their mind. They're understanding all these things through the rebooting process, and they end up being even more successful than they already are. We have a lot of guys who come in, and a common one I hear is there's this certification that I need to take for my career to improve, to get to the next level. There's this course, there's this class I haven't finished, and they come in, and during their time in the program, they dust off all those things that they invested in, all those old courses, and they just go through them like machines, and they finish them. Why? Because they have the basics of the program. They get to the lifestyle part and then they start moving into the self-image part. That's when the crazy stuff happens. When you start seeing yourself, for instance, if you're a guy who has a lot of certifications and things you purchased that you never did sitting around, just constantly at the back of your mind, a couple of times a month or a week or a day, you just remember, ah, oh, fuck, there's this thing I paid for and I just never used it. I probably should, blah, 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 and you never do. When your self-image changes to that of a man who just accomplishes stuff. Like I'm the kind of man who finds the time to do the things that are important to me. I'll make this stuff important to me. I'll sit down for an hour a day early in the morning, in the evening, in the middle of the day, and I'll knock this out consistently. They just start doing it automatically. That's a huge change. None of this stuff is possible if you won't even make time to do a 20-minute morning routine that covers some of the basics. Now, like I said, this was recorded for Brothers in the implementation program. Just a, a few parts of this were shared with Brothers in the implementation program. I'm just sharing it with you guys here. It's an edited version. For those of you in the implementation program, for those of you who are interested in it, the coaches and myself, the reboot leaders, the advanced brothers in their late stage and their maintenance stage, they're not here to hold your hand like, you know, like a child and make sure you do the basics. These environments have been created for you. You have the right positivity and the right encouragement in this environment. You have the right knowledge. This is a system that has been tried and tested since 2012. Gentlemen, that's not when I rebooted. <laughs> I rebooted before that. <laughs> that's when I started coaching men. So we've tested it over and over again. It has been refined and it will continue to be refined. Yeah, 10 years is wonderful, but I'm not a fly-by-night person. I'm here for the long game. I'm going to continue refining this system and make it the best on the planet. Because even though it is the best right now, I'm paranoid. <laughs> and when I say the best, it means that I don't want to hear that a man had to go somewhere else to get help for this. When you come in and we have both mutually decided that you're a good fit, again, some men are not a good fit and we'll refer them out to someone else. But I do not want to see any man who's a good fit for our program go somewhere else. So we have the right knowledge. We have the right people, speaking of whom we let into the program. You have the right men. You have men who are your peers. Don't worry. When you come in, everyone has their insecurities. You might feel uncertain. Like, oh, man, am I like these guys? But when you, you can go back to their posts because we don't hide anything. You can go and search the group and go like, let's find if this is bullshit or not. And you can literally... You have hundreds of men in the group. You can pick one guy who seems to be crushing it. And you can go way back to when he joined the program. You can see how long he's been in the program. You can go through his stories. You can see, okay, like these are his posts in the group. This, oh my God, like this is what he overcome. There is a blueprint. This isn't some dudes who are like sitting in, in a circle in the basement somewhere, you know, sharing. And there's no, there's no timeline. 
that you don't know when you join an SAA group what the real story is. You're just like, this dude has been here for 12 years. What's his story? No, you can actually see the stories and the videos and so on and so forth. Again, all of it is private. You get the right skills. You get the right mentors. Right now, we have two psychotherapists within the group. We have a neural reprogramming coach. We have a biochemistry coach who helps you with all your fitness needs, all your nutritional needs. He also helps you to read your hormone panels. He can pass it to doctors at the place he works. Eventually, we are going to get some some physicians in the group. We're going all the way, but you have the right mentors. You have the right professionals to support you, the right coaches, the right amount of experience. The only thing that you need to do is to take advantage of it and implement every single man. If you are accepted, the key word here is accepted, gentlemen. For those of you who've been sitting on the fence, you're like, I'm not sure if I should do this or not. Some people say like, oh, I'm going to do your program. I don't know if you're going to do my program, dude. Before you start saving your money, you better get your butt on <laughs> on the phone or on Zoom and speak to one of our reboot strategists to find out if you're even qualified. Yes. If you say like, oh, I'm saving up for it, I'm waiting for it, please do not wait for one year or two years and then cuss out my reboot strategies because you've saved up and you have the money and he doesn't think you're a good fit for the program. I'm very serious about that. I don't want anybody upset. But if you make it into the group, then that means that you are capable of mastering the basics and moving on to lifestyle within a year. Some men will do it within a few months and we will see them at a stage where they are changing their self-image. It does happen. And you don't know if that's going to be you. So brothers, have confidence. Even if you're just listening to the podcast and you've been following it for a while, first of all, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I never knew that we would get tens of thousands of people downloading this every month. So I appreciate your trust in me. I appreciate you giving up the time of your day to listen. But you are in the right place. And there's no other time than now. If you're sitting there thinking, ah, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this at some point in time. It is now. Learn how to live in what I call the panic zone. It simply means that once you make a decision and you decide to pull the trigger on something that has been recurring in your life, something that you know deep down inside that you should do, your unconscious mind is going to help you. First of all, it will second guess the decision that you have made. I remember the first coach I ever worked with, probably about 16 years ago, I decided to just pull the trigger. I decided to pull the trigger because he was actually closing his business, which he actually did. And he said, I'm just looking for like a couple of more guys to coach. I was like, oh my God, I've been following this guy for years. Now the chance is going. Fine. I have no choice. It wasn't a marketing gimmick. He was very honest. He did shut it down forever. So I pulled the trigger and I worked with him. And the moment I pulled the trigger and I sent this man the money, which I didn't have, I immediately experienced fear. Now I understand that that was my unconscious mind trying to protect me from future pain. It was like, you don't have this money. You don't know how you're going to pay off the debt. And there is no guarantee that the skills you're going to learn from this coach are going to help you make that money back. I kept thinking about the money and the fears around it. I wasn't really thinking about the pain I was experiencing and how freed I would be when that pain was resolved. I wasn't thinking of that because my brain was never thought to think of that. Because I didn't truly believe that I could overcome it. I just knew it was very important for me to move past that pain. But I did it nonetheless. I lived in that panic zone. And once I could sit with that feeling of second guessing myself for a couple of days, I realized that, oh, I have no choice. Like I can't even get a refund. I can't do anything. It was all there in the fine print. Then my unconscious mind was like, oh shit, well then you better go all out. (laughs) You can't get your money back. You can't back out. You can't lie to him. Hey man, I I really thought about it. I don't think this is the right time for me. I don't think your program is right. I couldn't do any of those things. Then my unconscious mind began to support me. And it's like, how? Instead of asking, how can I run away from this? It was like, how can we run towards this with courage and make the most of it? Huge lesson I learned. And then I started living in the panic zone. I started moving towards those fears, making those decisions, knowing that immediately after I made the decision, till today I still experience that, immediately after I made those decisions, I would experience a lot of fear. I would second guess myself. I would think it was the wrong decision. But this was the thing that all top performers that I'd ever been around did, and they did it naturally. They made the decision, they made it quickly, and they moved forward. 
there is no other time. It's an illusion that there will be another time that is good for you. And I truly mean it, especially when it comes to things like your compulsive behavior. Now, when it comes to things like marriage, when it comes to things like having a kid, when it comes to even things like buying a house, these are things that will have a lifelong negative impact on you if you don't do them right. So if you hear someone tell you, there's no right time to have a kid, there's no right time to get married, there's no right time, you better think twice because the long-term negative impact is serious. But when it comes to things that can bring you transformation in a short period of time and a long-term positive impact, the upside is very, very high, then live in the panic zone and make the decision. Now is the right time and it's the only time to transform your life. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man, and free yourself from shame, guilt, and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.